Hey guys, Mike here and in this clip we're going to review the HTC 8X, the flagship in Microsoft's Windows Phone 8 Armada. We'll have a look at the build quality, we'll talk about the screen, the speed, the everyday experience, the cameras and many others. So stay tuned and if you like the clip, I'd ask you to subscribe to my channel, your support helps us keep making videos like this one. Ok, we'll start by taking the HTC Windows Phone 8X out of the box in the next couple of seconds. As you saw, we have the purple version of the HTC 8X for tests here, but this one is also available in a bunch of other colors. From starters, you'll notice that the 8X is not like any other handsets available in stores right now. With a soft polycarbonate body that perfectly integrates with the glass on top, with the rounded edges and the concave profile, the HTC 8X is just a marvelous slab of technology. In fact, there's nothing sharp or flat on this phone, except for the middle of the screen. But while the looks are astonishing, the HTC 8X isn't exactly the most practical phone out there. First, there are those rather pointy corners that can make the phone slightly uncomfortable to hold. Also, some might find that the matte back does not provide the grip you'd want and the phone can easily slip through your fingers, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Especially since the Windows Phone 8X by HTC is not a compact handset. It does come with a 4.3 inch screen but is in fact nearly as large as its competitors with 4.6, 4.7 or even 4 point inch displays. And that's because of that wide bezel around the screen. The phone is not very light either and it measures about 10mm in thickness. However, it seems like a much slicker device. In fact, at least 3 different persons told me that they find the ATEX incredibly slim when they first saw it, but that is just an illusion caused by the rounded ridges. Anyway, despite all this, I found that the phone sits well in hand, although I still can't use it comfortably with my thumb and most of you won't be able to either. And to be frank, I wasn't expecting that from a device with a 4.3 inch screen. Having a look around the HTC 8X, you'll notice that this one does not have a removable back as the battery is encased and the ports and buttons are round around the edges. On top there's the power button, a 3.5mm audio jack and a secondary microphone. On the right there's the micro sim tray, the volume rocker and a dedicated shutter button and on the bottom there's the micro USB connector. That means that there's no card slot. The buttons are made from anodized aluminum and they match the phone's color, but they sit pretty much flush with the case thus can be difficult to press. Also the layout isn't necessarily the best. On the back the HTC packs the camera with LED flash and a micro drilled grill for the speaker just beneath the Beats audio logo. Turning the handset up. We'll once again look at the gorgeously glass covered front face that just flows into the edges. The 4.3 inch screen sits in the middle while below there are 3 capacitive windows buttons and on top there's the speaker grill, the front facing camera and the light sensor. Also there's a notification LED smartly embedded into that grill. The display itself is close to excellent but you'll have to get past the fact that other similar size phones actually pack larger screens. The 1280x720 pixel resolution ensures a 342 ppi pixel density, so everything is going to look incredibly sharp on this HTC, including texts. The Super LCD 2 panel and the laminated glass surface also help when it comes to colors and viewing angles, while the bright display makes it perfectly usable outside even in strong light. In fact, there's little you can say wrong about the screen, except for one thing. Blacks aren't exactly black, definitely not like what you get on AMOLED displays and even some other LCD2 panels out there. There's a dual core Snapdragon S4 processor on the HTC 8X with 1GB of RAM, Adreno 225 graphics and 16GB of storage. There's no card slot so you can't increase that. Connectivity wise the phone isn't shabby either as it offers LTE support, NFC, Bluetooth and fast dual band wireless. The great hardware platform is definitely snappy and efficient. I've took the ATEX through a couple of benchmarks and you can see the results below. Of course, the software has a lot to do with those numbers as well. The HTC ATEX is running on Windows Phone 8 
which might not seem like a massive evolution from the previous Windows Phone 7.5, but hides tons of changes under the hood. The first thing a new user will see is the new home screen, covering the full width of the screen and able to accommodate live tiles that now can be set to three different sizes. The entire home page is easily customizable and the tiles will show all the needed details, changes and notifications in one place. Anyway, I'm not going to get in depth about Windows Phone 8 here, I'll leave that for another clip. But I will tell you a couple of things about the features I enjoyed on the new Microsoft OS and some of its annoying quirks. For instance, I like how the OS allows you to organize contacts in rooms, and the people inside the room can easily share stuff between them on all kinds of services or see updates about other members' activities. Then there's this thing called Kids Corner, which acts like parental control on the phone, allowing users that do not know the lock password access to only a given set of apps and features. Windows Phone 8 now also comes with a wallet app, and since this phone has NFC, you can use it for payments with supported sellers. There are other changes as well, like the improved Maps app that no longer relies solely on Bing's Maps, or the browser based on Internet Explorer 10, faster and smoother than it used to be. Microsoft also dropped the Zune Marketplace and replaced it with Xbox stores for content, music or games. That also makes adding your own content from a computer a lot easier, as you can now connect the phone via USB and just copy-paste the files in the desired folders, much like what's happening with Android devices. And then there's the default Facebook integration, Outlook and Gmail apps, Skype and others. Of course, when it comes to third-party content, the Windows marketplace is still quite barren, but in time the ecosystem should grow. Right now though, there's poor support for most of the Google apps, like Gmail, YouTube or Google+, while plenty of the popular apps from Android or iOS are still missing or are pretty flawed. All in all, with the HTC 8X you get pretty much the default Windows Phone 8 experience, as HTC packs very few of their own tweaks and applications on this handset, and that's good. For the average user, I find that Windows Phone 8 is intuitive and easy to use. Microsoft went for simplicity and a minimalistic approach and I believe they did a pretty good job here with the core functions of their OS. There are however issues that you'll discover while using the phone, but hopefully they will be fixed with future software updates. When it comes to multimedia, the HTC 8X has its ups and downs. For instance, I've tried to run a bunch of types of movies on this one and only some of the files were actually seen by the phone, but the playback quality was pretty good with the ones that worked. YouTube is working alright on this device as well, although the YouTube app I've been trying still needs polishing. And then there's the music player, pretty basic and straightforward, with support for flow cover and beats audio that enhances the sound volume. There's no FM radio on this handset, but at least the sound quality is alright with Beats Audio activated, both when using the speaker on the back of the phone or when using a good pair of headsets. As for games, well, there aren't exactly many titles available in the store, but those that are work flawlessly on the ATEX. There's an 8 megapixel camera on the HTC ATEX with a wide f2.0 lens, back illuminated sensor, and a dedicated image chip processing engine. There's also a 2.1 megapixel front camera capable of shooting 1080p video, which isn't something you find on many smartphones these days. The interface is simple and easy to use, while still providing access to a couple of manual settings, but not as complex as what you get with Android phones. Modes like burst shots or panoramas are missing for now, but they can be added as lenses, which are some type of enhancements and filters you can use with your cameras on Windows Phone 8. Anyway, I'm not going to show you the pics and the videos I've got with the 8X in this clip because I already posted a full video just about that, so go ahead and check it out if you want to see how good are the two cameras on this device. The HTC does a decent job at dealing with the daily phone tasks, like taking and making calls or texting. The call quality is average, I had no problems with drop signal or anything like this, but I can't say there's anything special about this phone when it comes to these basic tasks. As for the battery life, well, the HTC can go through the day with medium use and even longer when used lightly, and that despite it packing just an 1800 mAh battery encased behind that polycarbonate shell. Alright, those are most of the things I wanted to tell you about the HTC Phone 8X. Hardware wise, there are many aspects you will definitely like about this handset, plus it comes with a breath of fresh air, a brand new OS for those of you already bored with iOS or Android. On the other hand, the unbaked OS might also be the thing holding you off this phone, as the ecosystem still has significant lags. So in the end, the HTC Windows Phone 8X is for sure a good phone, but in a market already saturated with good phones, I believe it has to be at least great to have a fighting chance. 
It has to face many competitors, both the iPhones and the Android heavyweight smartphones, but also rivals from within its ecosystem, like the Nokia Lumia 920 and the Samsung Active S. So is it good enough to buy these days? I'd say that it could be, but that depends on what you're planning to do with your new phone. Anyway, I'd like to know what do you guys think is the answer to that question. Make sure to leave your replies below and I'll catch you later. But in the meantime, you should also go ahead and share this clip to your friends and subscribe to my channel if you liked it. Cheers!